Hi, welcome. Hi there. I'm Sally. I'm Charlene. Hi, Caroline. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Here to do a VO2. We are. Okay, Charlene, we'll get you to hop on the bike now. VO2 max is how they measure aerobic fitness. A big factor in how far and fast an athlete can run, cycle or swim. How does that feel, all right? Yeah, it feels good. Oh, good. But it matters for us because aerobic fitness is also a great predictor of life expectancy. Okay, we'll just get you to put this in your mouth now, like a snorkel. Are you good to go? Great, we'll get started. In okay. three, two, one, go. So stop pedaling, bring your ribs up. I have to maintain a constant target speed. This is your nice Sunday stroll. Head physiologist Sally Clark is going to increase the resistance every three minutes. And pretty soon, that's going to hurt. You're obviously using that Tour de France visual <laughs> to help you channeling Richie Port or Cadell Evans. I can see that his VO2 is, over time, is going up slowly. So at the moment, yeah. it's sitting on 32 mils per kilo. OK. So he's on his way um, to his max. That's 32 mils of oxygen per kilo of my body weight that I can turn into power at the pedals every minute. For a male of my age, anything over 43 is a good score. Keep going. Keep going, Charlie, and that's it. Keep going. To get an accurate reading, it has to be a test to exhaustion. Come on, let's show us what you got. Another 15 pace. seconds, come on, Sandra. Another 15 seconds till we get a reading. You can do it, you can do it. Come on, come on. Another five seconds, see this out, see this out. Come on, another three seconds, see it out, see it out. Come on, come on. Push it through. And, okay, roll it quits there. Okay. Oh. Alright, so how hard was that last effort? 19, great work, well done. Nice work, I'm so proud of you. I've lasted 14 minutes on the bike and reached 225 watts of resistance. God, you set a high bar now. <laughs> I don't know why I'm putting myself through this. Earlier I discovered that high intensity exercise can get me fit much faster. Some claim going all out for as little as three minutes a week can be as effective as hours at moderate intensities. And as someone with even less time than willpower, that's got to be a good thing. That's it, you're doing well. So I've asked resident taskmaster, Sally Clark, to show me how it's done. I want to see how much it hurts. I can feel the resistance. He's still talking though. I am still talking. <laughs> trying to shut me up, Sally. <laughs> there are lots of ways to do high intensity training, but instead of all out bursts, I'm trying an easier version. 10 minutes at slightly less intensity, repeated three times a week. I feel like you don't want to talk to me anymore, Charlene. Rather not. <laughs> the question is, can I handle it? Okay, you've got 20 seconds left of this effort. Sally's regime requires me to maintain a speed of 80 RPM. And down it goes. Okay, you're halfway through. Alternating between 10 one minute rests with little resistance. And 20 and seconds. We're going up again. Let's do it. Four more. Okay, and we're going up now. And 10 one minute sprints with the resistance cranked up high to push my heart rate to 90% of my maximum. You're nearly through this one. Got about 10 seconds until the workload goes back down again. Five, four, three, two, one, down we come. To my surprise, it's not as painful as I expected. You know, the rest is probably helping compared to the VO2 max. Yeah, it would. Because I do cycle, so I guess my cycling muscles are kicking in or something. <laughs> she pauses before she answers. <laughs> Getting ready to go up again? You can do this. Now, apart from aching calves, pounding heart, and lots of sweat, I'm not entirely sure what's happening to my body. 
or how this intensity makes such a big difference. That was good work there. I feel it getting harder. And coming back down. While there's plenty of evidence that HIT delivers exercise benefits in less time, science is only just beginning to understand why. How are we feeling? All right. What are we going to go up for the last one? All right. Countdown from five. Yep. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. And up we go. What we do know is it has to do with our mitochondria, the tiny parts of our cells that make energy. Okay, stay on that gear. When we stress our muscle cells with high intensity exercise, it triggers regeneration of the mitochondria, increasing their number and improving their performance. Okay, 20 seconds through. The end result is that my aerobic endurance increases. That's good, Charlene. My insulin receptor response improves and my cells get better at metabolizing fats and sugars before they can do me harm. But it bloody hurts. Heart rate's at 162, right where we want it. Okay, 10 seconds. 164. Three, two, one, and down we come. How was that? It's good. It's good. I think you like this high intensity. You know what, Sally? It's. I'm lazy, but when a competition's involved, I get competitive. So you like beating the numbers? I like beating the numbers. Maybe I'll take this up. Great. Just gotta find a bike. And a Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I gonna find a Sally, oh. Sally? <laughs> Sally's shown me that you don't have to be an elite athlete or even have a particularly high pain tolerance to train in the high intensity zone. I reckon most people could do this, even me.